Seven expenses that will drain your retirement savings. Ooh, I'm a sucker for these kind of lists. Seven things to know that Josh is the best. Seven reasons why Josh is the worst. Put them in there. The seven reasons why Josh is the worst YouTuber. Put it in there in the notes right there. Um, what else? Seven reasons why Charlotte should never have married Josh. That's a good one, too. I'm still, I'm still as stunned at this guy who got so offended by me making fun of him uh, today, last night. I'm still, I'm still, I can't get over it, man. I'm like, dude, I'm just talking to these guys, say, from Louisiana who are just crushing. And we're just, I was having a chat about this because, uh, you know, I, me and this guy are trading emails and having a good time with each other. And uh, <laughs> I said, I told him about the story. He goes, man, doesn't he realize that when you make fun of people, that's the people you like the most? You know, you don't make fun of people who can't stand. It's like, dude, I don't want anything to do it. It's just, I was like, oh, my goodness. Ugh. It, it, it bothers me, man, that someone literally thought when I was making fun of him, I was like, ah, I just, it's crazy. All right, he doesn't know. Yeah, it was <laughs> so cra our, uh, crazy. Jill has sent this to me, the conspiracy theorist of all. You think I'm a conspiracy theorist? Jill, you know who you are in Indiana. She's a conspiracy theorist. She was like, why do we have uh, these uh, pyramids in Indiana? I said, you know why, Jill. You know why there's pyramids in Indiana? Because the history we've been told is wrong. People were here well before Christopher Columbus and not just American Indians. There's other kinds of people. There. We know that Christopher Columbus, by the way, saw blue-eyed, yellow-haired people in the United States. Maybe Joseph Smith was correct. Maybe Jesus was in the United States. Who knows, man? Who knows? The history we've been told is absolutely what Napoleon say. History is an agreed-upon lie. That's just a fact. All right, let's keep going here. Seven, expe get this in there. Okay, get that out of there. Seven expenses that will drain your savings, retirement savings the fastest, says uh, GoBankingRates.com. All right. I, see, see, I hate these things with all these freaking ads in here. It drives me crazy. Uh, let's see. As your plan for retirement is important to anticipate some of the costs that can eat into your savings. Here are seven. Healthcare. Yep, I agree with that. Even Medicare out-of-pocket expenses can be significant, says this guy or lady. All right. Um, oh, boy. Oh, no, no. They do. They use. Oh, for the love. Uh, one estimate by. <laughs> Dude, how stupid this is. One estimate by whoever these people are says a healthy 65-year-old couple who retired in 2021 will likely spend between $156,208 and $1 million. So this is very specific. I'm surprised they don't get to the pennies there. That's very specific. $156,208, that'll be the low end, and $1 million on the high end. Okay. Uh, why not to have one million? What? That's just a stupid. I mean, anyway, best, but it's what one hundred percent true. Man. I mean, I charge each couple five hundred bucks, depending on the state. If you're in a blue state, five fifty. If you're in a red state, five hundred bucks a month for Medicare for each person. That's a, that's a thousand schmackaroonies a month, dude. without even adjusting for inflation. If you live ten years, that's twelve thousand between you and your spouse. That's one hundred twenty thousand bucks. That's just a fact. That's what I charge. It's one of the bigger expenses for most of the people I work with in retirement. It just is, man, because most people I work with in retirement, guess what? They just don't spend that much. They just don't. They're not spending $150,000 a year. They're just not. I mean, some people do. That's okay. All right? So, and, and I got some people are on the Part C, by the way, Medicare Advantage, and they're loving it. Now, I don't know if that's going to be loving it if things go south for Medicare Advantage in terms of changes all the time. I think if you can afford it, you go on Medicare supplemental policy, but I'm not a licensed insurance advisor. I'll leave that to you to talk to my man, J.O. over at uh, MaximizeYourMedicare.com or uh, Daniel, what's your name? Daniel Roberts down there at uh, BoomerBenefits.com. You talk to those people, they'll get you situated. But I like Medicare supplemental policies if you can afford it. All right, I'm not going to get into Part C. Home ownership. If you own a home, that can be another source of major expense. 100%, man. It's home age. Significant repairs like plumbing, roof replacements. Yep. Uh, from 2016 to 20, Americans age 65 and older spent an average of, we don't like to use the average, but spent $16,880 per year on housing related costs. Now, what they don't say here is that if your mortgage is paid off, you're not spending anywhere near that. You're just not. Um, so the $16,680 per year is all inclusive for everything. And don't forget, if, if you actually read my book right here, I talked about what how the BLS, when it comes to CPI, defines um, uh, for uh, home ownership. We have uh, 
And that, that's not what they're saying for the BLS. The BLS consumer expenditure surveys is not using owner equivalent rent or anything like that. They're just using how much do people spend. And if you, they literally define it. If you have a mortgage, this is what you spend. If you don't have a mortgage, this is what you spend. If you don't have a mortgage, you're just not spending that much. And you, I, I go into a deep dive in this in this book, which you should get. It's my favorite book, uh, 170 pages. I enjoyed writing that one the most. All right, let's keep going. Uh, inflation. Inflation can have a significant impact on your savings. Right, here's Jeff Bush, Jeb Bush's brother. Uh, this uh, portfolio is, is this can be particularly troublesome if your portfolio is ma made up of fixed income strategies that don't have the ability to keep up with inflation by increasing income over time. I completely agree with that. What I'm saying, if you're on a fixed income, fixed income being bonds, sorry. And uh, you have $100,000 of income and you're spending $100,000. bucks. The spending next year could be $103,000, but you still only have $100,000 of income. I completely agree. Now, on the other hand, though, what happens for retirees? Their spending doesn't go from 100 to 103 by and large. Their spending goes to 98 to 96. Not for everybody, but if we look at people going, if we're going to use BLS, we've got to use BLS across the board. You can't just use BLS, be able to flavor statistics numbers. To say, oh, look, the average retiree spends this on housing, but not look at the other side of it. What's the average retiree spending that goes down, according to BLS? It's just bad. Adult children and their children, yeah. Student loans to cell phone bills, many retirees find themselves uh, assisting their children. 79% of parents were providing financial support to their adult children, contributing in a, in a combined of $500 billion. Wow. Taxes. Now, here's a big issue I have with this right here. Once you start taking out money of your retirement accounts, you have to pay taxes. Yep. You may also have to pay taxes on a portion of your Social Security. You know what I'm saying? But if you look at my books, you can retire on Social Security. I showed you that you don't have to pay taxes if Social Security is a bulk of your uh, expenditure, of your income. Now you might have to pay some. I, I don't want to say you won't have to, but if, you, if Social Security is your only source of income, I guarantee you're not paying any taxes. I just guarantee you that. If Social Security and $20,000 of IRA distributions are your income, I guarantee your tax man is going to be very, very low. If you're married, if you're single, a little bit higher, but still quite low. I'm just telling you right now, you can have a lot of income, the bulk of it being on Social Security, and not have to pay much tax. Just The guy I just talked to today from Louisiana. Between his pension, from his Air Force pension, his uh, Civil Service pension, his Social Security, his wife's Social Security, in the let's say is it 10 years i can't remember but they're gonna be making like 182,000 bucks a year. Now, not today's dollars but in 10 i think maybe it's 20 years i can't remember 182,000 bucks a year i think it was in 20 years they're gonna pay like you know, 18,000 bucks in tax that's a 10 percent effective tax rate right there that's just not that big of a deal just not and that's with pensions which are fully taxed from the federal government now the state doesn't tax it but still that, that's he's already added 12 percent of the tax bracket anyway so he's paying an effective 10% tax rate. You ain't making shit to stick with that. And that's with pensions, not just Social Security. For me, it's going to be Social Security, uh, Roth IRA, and then the income I get from my uh, brokerage account, which would be qualified dividend income and long-term capital gains. So it's going to be tax-free. Market downturns. So that's the big one right there. So again, the, the, the headline is seven expenses that will drain your retirement the fast. The biggest one is market downturn right here, without question. Uh, in order to reach your retirement goals, you have to put some of your mark money at high risk. But you, you don't have to do that forever. I was talking to this guy today, my uh, my man out in Kansas, who's freaking crushing. Love this guy. Um, you know, he didn't want to write that sixty-eight thousand dollar check to pay off his mortgage, but his wife said, "Let's do it," and he did it. And then he's happy as a clam. I said, "That's why you got to listen to your wife. She knows a couple things." Anyway, so he paid off his mortgage. I, right now, he's only fifty-four years old. His wife's fifty-three. Yeah, and um, you know they're ninety ten stocks to bonds, and we're running the numbers. I said, but you know, ten years from now when you retire, you're not going to be ninety ten anymore. At that point, it'll be 50, 50, 60, 40. You know, situation dictates, of course. But you know, just because you're aggressive now doesn't mean you have to stay aggressive for the rest of your life. It's just you just well, in fact you shouldn't. If you if, uh, let's see, <clears throat> while well, over time this results in, it could result in large returns, be more aggressive. Short term market downturns can have a significant impact on your retirement savings. Um, actually, I want to show you guys something. Watch this. EDV, a bond fund, long term government bonds, zero coupon bonds. So look right here. In July of 2020, is at 13,644. Come all the way down here to 5,576 bucks. Isn't that crazy? 
13,644. So we take 13,644 minus 5576 divided by 13,644. It was down 60%. 60%. Isn't that not crazy? Yes, it is. I mean, I just, it's amazing to me how much. And then you look at, we're going to look at uh, the VFINX right there. And we're going to go here, 2007 to 2009. And I, so this, that was a bond fund. And we're going to go here. The, 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 this S&P 500, watch this. It was down October 2007 right there. It was at 11.077, it fell to 5,400. 11, this is stocks, all stocks. 11, oh, what does it say to 5,400? 57%, this is stocks. The bond fund was down more than the S&P 500. Tell me that's not crazy. Now let's go to, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to show us Qs. Let me hold on just a second, let's go to QQQ. Go here. Oops, I got to go. Hold on a sec. I can go to 2000 right there. Point to 2003. Watch what happened to the Qs. I'm not sure it's going to show us or not. It should. Yeah, look at this. 12000 to 2000 bucks. I mean, it's, look, that's 80% down. It's freaking crazy. You can't afford any of that stuff. Obviously, you're kind of expecting it in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. You're not expecting a long-term government bond. You cannot have that happen. You can't have all your eggs in one basket. You just can't. When you're retired. And you're, and, I mean, how long did it take for the NASDAQ to get back to 11000 bucks? So let's just let's go to one second. I mean, it was down 80 freaking percent. So it's at 11,000 bucks right there. It took to 14, 2014. It took to freaking 12 years just to get back. If you're pulling money out of this thing, you're doomed. Now look at this. But look at where we are now. Yeah. Let's log that. Watch this. Not quite as impressive, but still impressive. Does that mean anything to you right here, though? Right? I mean, look at that. From 2009 to 2023, you just, you can't, I, where I'm going with this is, you, A, you can't chase. Um, you can't chase numbers. And B, you certainly, you, if it's had that such of a run like this, look at this. 10,000 to 149,000 over the course of 15 years. That's a compounded at 19%, dude. Do apps, I mean, see now here's the conundrum we have. Is that due to the horrific odds that it went through? It's just making up. I think some of that has to be said there. So it's averaged basically 20% for the last 15 years. In the last in the overall thing is averaged 6.9%. That's how bad the first 10 years were. So you can't say, well, the, the last 10 years have been so good, it's, it's impaired, it's down, it's doomed to go down. We don't know that. That could be just making up for how bad it was before. I don't know. You don't know. Well, let's go to EDV and run the same thing. I'm just curious, actually. Let's see what EDV did. Because maybe EDV just made up, gave up all, all the uh, the gains it had in the, in the teens. I don't know. We'll see. So here we are, going back to 2009, was accepted. It went from 10000 bucks to 22, you know, 20, that's, yeah, that's uh, 11 years. That's not a huge rate of return. It's about 7% rate of return for bond. That's, you know, that's pretty good, man. I'm not going to lie to you, but a little bit less because it's 11 years. But then we factor in where, look at that. We are right back to where we were. We've averaged 0.33%. Anyway, so where I'm going with this is just because this had a great decade <clears throat> doesn't mean NASDAQ and the S&P 500 doesn't mean it's doomed to have a bad decade because those decades simply might be making up for the bad decade it had in the odds. I, no one knows. No one. In this case, the EDV, though, you're like, it had a bad decade. I mean, it had a pretty good decade, but literally in the course of two years, it gave them all back. That's what's crazy about it. I mean, who knows? I don't know. But well, going back to what these guys say here is that we can't afford uh, a huge market downturn when you're pulling money out. So what's this guy say? 
George Bush's brother. Uh, if you're in retirement, uh, suggested setting aside at least three years worth income in an account with low volatility. You could not agree more. One hundred percent. Longevity. For better or worse, people live much longer these they they do live much longer these days than they used to. Much longer. I don't know about that. A baby born in the U.S. in 2021 has an estimated life expectancy of over 76 years. But I'm not a baby born today, uh, people. I'm 53 years old, so a baby a life expectancy has nothing to do with me. A life expectancy has to do if you're 65. What's your life expectancy now compared to what it was? So you're living a few years longer, but not, uh, what do they say, much longer. It's just silly. Always have a rainy day fund. Uh, let me guess. Long-term care insurance. Okay, long-term care. Nothing expensive there at all. But anyway, I agree. Seven funds, seven expenses that could rock your world right there. And you got to be careful. You got to be on the lookout for this stuff, dude, for sure. Having your mortgage paid off, uh, maintaining your health. You know, the people I talked to today, now they're retired. They're going to the gym three times a day, about three times a week. Uh, just getting out there, getting your blood pumping. You know what I'm saying? Being content. Contentment, man. I tell you. Can, being content will alleviate a lot of the issues you got to deal with emotionally, which affects your physical ability. That's just a fact, man. And get your emotional, get right with God, first and foremost. Just get right with Jesus. Get right with God. Get right with your, your own soul. Say, what am I here to do for the rest of my life? You know, I'm not slaving away anymore. I'm going to do what I want to do, but I also got to do something good for the world. So that's what you got to do. You got to protect your downside risk. You got to pay off your mortgage, man. You know, if you're going to, you know, don't be freaking doing meth. And don't be doing any of that crap. You know, give up alcohol. Alcohol is nothing good with alcohol, dude. Homer says, alcohol, the problem and the cure, the uh, cause and the cure for all of life's problems. I guarantee if we, uh, if we got rid of alcohol, and I'm not saying ban it. I don't agree. Banning it is stupid. But if we got rid of it, I guarantee all of a sudden people are like, hey, man, there won't be any more fighting, anything like that. I guarantee. It's not going to happen, but I guarantee that, that would solve a lot of problems and obesity, drunk driving, stupid fights and stuff like that. Ideally, that you got to take some money on the side and put it to the side. And now you're getting five and a quarter on money markets. No. All right. Love to your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe to the email list down below. And we'll see you. Oh, by the way, if you want to help the channel, by all means, use my Amazon link. I'll put it in the first comment. Anytime, anytime you're chopping, click on my link. And whatever you buy from then on, I don't know what it is. I don't know who you are, but Amazon will pay me a big fat commission. Don't you want to help me out?